Welcome back to American Morning. Ron Paul has a plan. If he becomes president, he claims he will balance the federal budget in his first year in office. And he will do that by cutting $1 trillion in government spending while eliminating five cabinet-level departments uh, of government. That includes the Department of Energy, HUD, Commerce, Interior, and the Department of Education, and also the TSA. He also wants to eliminate all foreign aid and all war spending. Presidential candidate and Texas Congressman Ron Paul joins us live here in Las Vegas. Thank you so much for getting Thank up you. early. Nice to be here. You have amazing energy. <laughs> How do you do it? Well, you know, uh, sometimes I think I'm lucky and blessed, and other times I work on it by uh, trying to follow some good health habits. Exercise. Get adequate exercise every day. That's good. You should talk to Ellie. Except when I have to be on TV early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I appreciate that. Um, Herman Cain is riding this wave of popularity right now. People are really into his 999 right. plan. What will be your strategy during tonight's de debate as far as Herman Cain is concerned? I'm going to do exactly what I've been doing for as long as I can remember. Trying to get people to understand how we got into this mess, what we have to do, why free markets are better than government man markets, why sound money is better than printing press money, and why we need to change our foreign policy. So I concentrate on policy, economic and foreign policy and monetary policy, and that is what I talk about. But sometimes you can't get a word in edgewise unless you attack <laughs> the candidate who's popular at the moment, because everybody's going to be concentrating on him. Yes, and I've had some advisors tell me that. Go after him, attack him. But that's my least favorite thing to do. I will when I'm pressed uh, and I'm challenged. Or if they challenge my supporters, then I get annoyed and I then I uh, feel offended when they do that. Uh, so I, I take that personal. Yeah, and your supporters are um, very passionate, <laughs> and I'm sure they appreciate that. Herman Cain's 999 plan. What do you think about it? I, I don't think it's a good plan. I think it's a dangerous plan. Why? Well, you know, for years and years, we've had this debate in Washington about the flat tax versus the uh, sales tax. And just like what we do in Washington, liberals want to spend, conservatives want to spend, and they're bipartisan. They come together and they spend both. And what 999 does is it compromises in the worst way. It gives you a sales tax and a flat tax and opens up the door to a value-added tax. I think it's very, very dangerous. And, uh, and, and uh, the way I see it, I, I don't think that it's, it's going to tax those who have bigger incomes. It's going to tax. It's a regressive tax. Uh, the people who are going to get a 9% sales tax and they don't even have jobs right now. So I think because it's so regressive, that's going to, if we ever came close to it, it would be very, very unpopular. Mm -hmm. And uh, matter of fact, I think the more people know about it, the more questions will be asked. Is Herman King qualified to be president? Oh, sure. I think uh, everybody on the stage is qualified. Uh, the big question is, what do they believe in? What are they going to do as president? So qualifications have a lot of variations to it. Even though, and I, I ask you that because Herman Cain has no government experience. When you look at his economic plan, his, I mean, the, the guy who helped him come up with this is a financial guy in Pepper Pike, Ohio. <laughs> so he hasn't taken the usual road in that, uh, and, and on foreign policy, he says, you know, I haven't really thought about it quite yet. Yeah, but you would say that... Uh, you know, you could charge me with not having a lot of high-paid economists tell me what to do, but I figured I've read about economics for 30 years, so I don't have to go out and depend on a key advisor. Uh, so that in itself doesn't bother me as much as what does he believe in? Uh, I mean, if he believes in a value-added tax and a sales tax and flat tax and, and all these things, that to me is very important. But the fact that he hasn't had this experience isn't necessarily uh, negative. What worries me is he's had a lot of political experience because he's been in the Federal Reserve System. And you can't do that without being very political. They haven't invited me to become part of the Federal Reserve System. So no, he's, I don't he's think part so. of that banking establishment. And no wonder because he, de he defended the bailouts and TARP funds and all this. So he's part of that system. And he did embrace Alan Greenspan in the last debate. And I yeah, know that you had, right. a, you had issue with that. Let's talk about your economic plan. You say that in your first year as president, you will cut a trillion dollars in federal spending. How? 
Of course, you have to get support. People have to know what you're doing. They have to know why they're doing it. Congress has to give you support. But elected president, you'd have to have support of the people and support of the Congress to do it. But you could do a lot on overseas spending. That's where my number one attack is. We're, because of all the overseas spending in the last 10 years, our national debt went up $4 trillion. That's a big hunk. So I want to bring the troops home, have them spend their money here at home, change their well, foreign policy. Part of your plan would be to eliminate all foreign aid, but foreign aid is really a tiny, teeny part. It's less than 1% of the federal budget, and it does build goodwill. After all, if we hadn't helped out Japan after World War II, if we haven't helped out Japan during the tsunami and earthquake there, that wouldn't have built the goodwill that we need to have with countries like Japan. Yeah. I'm working on goodwill with the American people. The people hate it. And besides, all those programs after World War II, the Marshall Plan, all, weren't, they, they were never what they were played up to be. There were a lot of shortcomings. They, they, everybody paints those as magic. But no, recovery came from the markets being recovered. So no, overseas spending is more than foreign aid. I'm talking about all the as money and the DOD department spent in going in Uganda and Libya and all these places without even congressional approval. They, that kind of stuff has to quit. Okay. If we don't, we're not going to solve our problem. Okay. Just, uh, I have to ask you one more question about this plan. It, the plan cuts out five cabinet departments and the TSA, but you don't mention anything about Social Security or Medicare. And those are the two big things that people are concerned right. about right now that's really busting our federal and, budget. Um, on the campaign, I've always said we have enough place to cut. We don't need to attack the elderly. We have made promises that was a contract, even though it's not the, the best program in the world. I would work real hard, and this is what my program does, cuts elsewhere in order to take the care of the people who have become dependent. But I do deal with Social Security because I let the young people opt out, and that's a big deal. And uh, But I think if we cut elsewhere, we don't have to put people out in the streets. So I have no regrets about cutting all this money overseas and protecting the people who are dependent, the okay. Social Security beneficiaries. I, I, I have to say that if you get Congress to agree with you, I would be, like, amazed and you would be <laughs> one heck of a politician. But you got to get the people on your side and they influence Congress because Congress really just our political people. If they think they can stay in office only by supporting cuts, how can we solve the problem of debt? By increasing debt. It doesn't make any sense. And I think the American people understand that. We'll hear much more in the debate tonight. Thank you so much for joining us so early. We appreciate You're that. Welcome. I hope you can take a nap in between <laughs> things. Morning headlines coming your way next.